Hi there. Sorry, I was a bit distracted when I was doing some research about the places that I'm looking at. And then I looked at the clock on my top, laptop. I went, oh my God. So I'm rushing about getting everything I need at hand, like my drink and everything else. <laughs> my phone. So, hi there, everyone, anyway. How's your day been? It's been a lovely day here today. Surprise, surprise. So, I hope you've all had a nice day, or are having a nice day, because it's evening here, and it's lovely out there. I did set up a live earlier for the 15th of July, because it's the three-year three anniversary. Now, I, I have been put off doing anything about this little girl, because there's so many people out there covering this little girl, and there's so much oh, bitching, in-house arguing, in-house fighting. You know what I mean? With the YouTubers. So I didn't want to get into all that. But I thought, you know, this is three years now that little Summer Moon Utah Wells has been missing. Right? And I have been keeping up to date with it because I watch I watch Ryan Fine's Truth. And he goes out there on the ground and he's looking at places because he he likes to hike, and he used to go and hike before he do hikes and look in caves and things like that. This was before he started looking for summer. So then he decided, you no, know, really, what he was doing when he was out there was looking for summer. So that's when he decided to say, look, I am looking for summer. Right, and by that way, he was getting more information come through to him as to where he could possibly look. And I love him. I love I love uh, Ryan and his wife, Jen. I think they're lovely. Anyway, so I've set up a live for the 15th, and then I thought, hold on, I'm not even here on the 15th of June. I'm down at my daughter's. And I thought, so, I can't do it on the Friday, the 14th, because I won't be here, because I go down to my daughter's on the 14th. So I'm doing on the 13th, better than nothing. And then I've just been setting up some more lives, like I'm just sorting out stuff for Audrey Cunningham, an update on that case. But this week I've got, as I said, I've got Sebastian tonight, uh, I've got Whitney Hatfield tomorrow, then I've got Stephen Stearns on Wednesday. So, Audrey Cunningham will be Friday. Or, because I won't be here Thursday, because I'm out. So, I doubt if I'll get online. Uh, unless I come on really late, but I can't want really to do that, because it's, t it's late my time then. It's like, if I said, oh, I'll come on at 6pm your time, in the USA, I'm looking at 12, 1 a.m., my time, and I'm not, I can't do that, sorry, I can't do that, so, I won't be on on the Thursday, this Thursday coming, I might do a video to have put out, set it so I can set, do a video and then set it to go out on that day, on the Thursday, at a certain time. So I'll probably do a video tomorrow sometime for Thursday. And that will be about Audrey, Audrey Cunningham. And that's just an update because we haven't heard nothing since he got charged with the murder of Audrey Cunningham. We haven't heard nothing else. So I thought, hmm, let's have a look, see what else is new. 
see if anything else come out that I've missed. But anyway, tonight we're back on Sebastian Rogers. Right, now, last night I've done a live. And I logged off. I uploaded my live and everything. Logged off. And I was sitting there and I was having a cup of coffee and a little snack. And I was watching BHB. And I was watching it. And I'm like... My mouth hit the my mouth hit the floor. How I didn't even drop my coffee because I was literally just like frozen. Like no way. How did I miss that? How did I miss that? But then I thought, hold on. This was the very, very first interview they ever did, and they did it with a YouTuber. I think it was, um, I can't remember when they'd done it now. But it was the very first time they ever did an interview, before they even did one with the news channel. Before they even did it one with the news channel. So, I wasn't paying much attention to that YouTube. I wasn't. I did listen to some of it, but not all of it. That's probably why I missed it. So, it says here on my title, Katie, what's the truth? Let's make this crystal clear. Right? And I was watching it, and it was literally 25 minutes into the live. Something like that. Katie, where's your son? Robin wants to know, we all want to know, Katie, where's your son? Stop hiding behind Chris. Because believe me, when this ball drops, he's going to throw you under the fucking bus. Hold on. He's going to throw you under the bus. Hi there, Robin. Anyway. And it's about 25 minutes into it. And the YouTuber is doing a recap. Obviously, she'd had an, uh, a phone call with him before. Don't know if it was on the same day she did the interview or whether it was a couple of days before or what. But she'd had a phone call. And she went, she was going on about, and you, Chris, you was at work. Was that, is that right? When we spoke, you was at work? He said, yes, that's right, ma'am. And she went, and Sebastian went to bed at nine. You, and Katie, you said you fell asleep about 10 p.m. And then woke up and went to bed about 12. And I'm going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? 10 p.m. she fell asleep? No, 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 no. Right? And then Chris comes up and goes, uh, can we just, there's a little thing we missed out. Oh, yes, there's a big thing you missed out, not a little thing. Let's make this crystal clear. You know that famous saying is going, let's make this crystal clear. And he goes on to talk about the phone call, where it started about 9.45. So I'm then sitting there thinking, hmm, so you was actually sleeping, reading a book for your course, that you are, I'm at school, and I'm a phone call. And as I said in that profile pic, I know we can, we are good at um, multitasking or swimming. We can, we can look after two children and more, stand and do a bunch of ironing and cook dinner and things like that. We can do more than one job at a time. But I don't, think I could even manage sleeping, reading, and talking to someone on the phone at the same time. I don't. And I am going to, so I thought, well, I'm going to go through this whole video to see what else we may have missed, because it doesn't make sense. 
And it's saying he's, he's literally jumped in and said, just make this crystal clear. I'm going to buy him a crystal ball. They are. They are. They are. It's so... And I was going, oh my God, really? <coughs> <coughs> and now, it's true what BHB said. When we was listening to that interview with Chris McDonough and that Mike, whatever his name is, that guy said, it's always best to see the very first interview they do. Because that's when they haven't had chance to fine-tune the story. Well, that was their very first interview. And I think a lot of people f are forgetting that. It wasn't the one with the newscast. It was the one with the YouTube. With the YouTuber. I'm not going to say the name. But, well, you'll see the name when it comes up on the video. So it was with Duchess. And I'll put the link. I believe I've got the link in the description already. Right, well. I think what happened is she's already told the police, law enforcement, her story, which was, right, which was, Sebastian went to bed at 9, she fell asleep at 10, woke up at 12, went to bed, right? But then, police have come back to them and said, well, uh, after having their phones, come back and said, um, there's a discrepancy. Uh, apparently, you was on the phone for like two and a half, two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. Not 10, 10, 10, 11. Three hours, 15 minutes. Four, nine to 10, 10, 10, 11. No, two hours, 15 minutes. Yeah, two hours, 15 minutes. So how could you have been asleep at 10 p.m.? So that's when they've, um, they've gone... Yeah, uh, I was falling asleep on the sofa. That's when they've had to make the phone call and her falling asleep on the sofa part of the narr narrative. Right? Yep, they should have done. I, don't, I can't believe they haven't. I can't believe they have not done forensics. It's so messed up, this case is, from day one. Yep. She needs to stop hiding behind Chris. She is hiding behind Chris. He's her mouthpiece. Why is he sticking up for her when you know she's, she's at fault? She was the last one to see her son. So where's your son, Katie? What happened on the Sunday night? Did he ever come home Sunday night? That's another question that a lot of people are now asking. Because there's no video of them coming home after they left the Texas Roadhouse. There's no video that we know of that law enforcement have even said of them coming home that night. Even neighbours have said there's no video. They've got nothing of her coming home that night. Right? So, how did she get past those cameras? <laughs> how did she get past them cameras? Well, I'd like to see, and we're not going to see this, Robbie, we're not going to see this, but I'd like to see the statement she first gave the police on the day he went missing because they always take a statement straight away of what of your of your recollection, yeah? Through the garage. Mm. But if they've not got if none of the cat neighbours have got any footage of her coming past their house on the night, which they would have done. Some one of those houses would have picked up something. 
I've heard coming home that night. But there's nothing, apparently. But there must be. Because law enforcement have seen someone taking the bins out. So there must be some footage of, perhaps she was just stuck super quick. She drove past these cameras so quick they didn't pick her up. But Katie, we've caught you out on a lie. You slipped up big time. Big time, Katie, you slipped up. You come out with this narrative thinking we will believe you. You forget we have got all day, every day, to go over all these stinking videos you have out there of your lives, of your story that you're putting out there and you are now sticking to. We are going over those lives time and time and time again because this is how we're finding your little sleep ups. Maybe no one wants to get involved. Possible. Possible. Seeing no evil, hearing no evil, speak no evil. That's three more things. Right? But she slipped up and I'm going to play it now. Right? I'll play it. Because I thought I've got to, I'm, I've even I even downloaded it in case she took it off in case to just removed this video. And I thought, no, I've got to get it, I've got to get it. But uh, hopefully I've still got it on my Facebook. Yes, it's still here. She hasn't took it off anyway. Otherwise, I'd have to go through all my downloads. Now, this is going to make me feel really sick. Because I really don't like listening to this this person, but I'm doing it for research reasons, okay? That's the only reason I'm doing it. And I'm going to go back, start where they're coming on it, okay? Uh -huh. Because, um, Shred Time's on it as well. I'm not sure if he's still got his YouTube channel. Because he said he was closing his YouTube channel down. And he was concentrating on this everything he was doing. It's fair enough. Yep, Robin, there's still... And if you tell the truth, what happens if you tell the truth? The story stays the, chain, the same. You don't need to add on anything if you're telling the truth. You don't. You only add on to it because you want people to really believe that this is what happened. And there's still no her, no word of a thug in this interview. No word of the thug in the new interview with the newscaster. She, they did another interview, well, Chris did an interview, I think, or whatever, with Smiley. There was no, I don't believe they brought in that thug then. It was when they did the interview with the Chronicles of Olivia. That's when the thug, oh, that thug was brought into it. So that was like, just this news. Hmm. By the fourth interview, the story kept changing. Kept changing. But I'm just, if you haven't seen this, you need to, you need to watch this because uh, right, we're at well, we're at 23, 22 now, so it's not long before she mentions this, okay? So. All right, what does that mean? Is it going? Oh, yeah, I ain't got the same done. Come on. Same. appreciate you being willing to talk to me um, about Sebastian going missing. So I guess I will just kind of start out with, um, tell me what happened the day that Sebastian went missing. I know that his mom said that he was having a good day. He had had a great weekend. So do you want to walk us through what that looks like again? 
for everybody? Um, he did have a really good weekend, actually. Um, when we come home from having supper that evening, um, he was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, when he went to bed, when I told him to go to bed, um, he had even, he said, I love you, mama. And he said, I love you, puppies. Um, a little later in the evening, I myself went to bed. And uh, when I went to wake him up for school, he wasn't here. And you did tell me that Sebastian is not a runner. He's not. It's okay. Take your time. Sebastian does not have a history of running. He, he, I mean, the young man doesn't go outside very much. I mean, everybody in the neighborhood knows him. Um, he is very um, to himself. I'll just stop that. I'll just stop. So to speak. Okay. Um, between the hours of you know, 12 and 6, he, he he has basically vanished. Walked out of the house, the door was locked and gone. He didn't take a phone. None of his shoes are missing. Now, you told me mommy. that night that, now, Chris, you were at work. You were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, yes, Mom, you uh, fell asleep on the couch. About ten o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at nine p.m. and then you got up off the couch and you went to bed and you said that was around midnight. Midnight. Did you hear that? I will go back over it several times if everyone in the background needs to hear this. I will. I will because I can't get over this. Sebastian is not a runner. He's not. It's okay. Take your time. Sebastian does not have a history of running. He, he, I mean, the young man doesn't go outside very much. I mean, everybody in the neighborhood knows him. Um, he is very um, Poof, is to himself, so to speak. <laughs> um, between the hours of, you know, 12 and 6, he... He has basically vanished. <laughs> Walked out of the house, the door was locked and gone. He didn't take a phone. None of his shoes are missing. Now, you told me that night that, now, Chris, you were at work. You were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, ma'am. Yes, mom, you uh, fell asleep on the couch. About ten o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at nine p.m. and then you so she fell asleep at ten o'clock. Sebastian had gone to bed at nine. She fell asleep at ten o'clock. Now, what was it she said to us? Oh, she was on the phone with Chris. At first, this was what she first said to us, and you'll hear it in a minute. You'll hear it in a minute. You'll hear it make it go very crystal clear. I know. I think she's upset. But she's crying. She's upset and crying because she knows her You got up off the couch dead. and you went to bed and you said that was around midnight. Midnight. And, and nothing was comes, unusual at that point. Everything so seemed okay. Comes, There's actually a piece of... So to make something very crystal clear. So Yes, Chris. Let's make it crystal clear. Right? As BHB said, <coughs> there's a woman on her... Who's a member of her show, of her channel? I think she does T-shirts. I think this woman's going to be making T-shirts. Maybe go summit with. Let's make it crystal clear. I don't know how many times you made this crystal clear, Chris. But can we make it crystal clear to you? We don't believe you. You're lying out your backside, and you're covering for a woman. Why? Why, Chris? 
It's going to make this crystal clear if we want this. Song. So that okay. way there's transparency across the board. Me and the mom were on the phone at 9.43 or 9.46 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments, TBI included. Uh, we stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mom did slightly start falling asleep while she was <laughs> on the couch. Um, I had a day. Hey, you need to wake up. Put the dogs up. Go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. Mm -hmm. So then mom does go to bed and wakes up early in the morning to go wake her son up, and get him ready for school. And now we have a worried mom who can't find her son in the house. Um, mom made an effort to look and search several times. Um, mom has called me at the time and asked me, she was like, I can't find him. I was like, dude, what? And she goes, yeah, I cannot find him. I said, well, hang on. I made the phone call and reported it to the sheriff's department because that's what we're supposed to do. And within 10 minutes, the sheriffs were dispatched to the location. No, you're supposed to phone 911. But you didn't phone 911. And no, be cool. you had told me that there hadn't been any particular situation that had occurred where you felt like there would have been something that happened. And I also had asked you if there were any friends that Sebastian might have possibly left the house with, or if he had any contact. That's a good question, Robin. Uh, Robin, Robin, yeah. Why would she put the dogs up when they sleep in her bed while Chris is not there? Yes. He's even said that. He said it in the, was it the last interview they just done? A worried mom. She's worried that she's going to be caught out on a lie. Well, we've just caught you out on one lie. And I think you corrected it with the police by saying, but I was on the phone with my husband. But you haven't even mentioned the fact yet that you're also reading a book. Hmm? Because I thought that was odd at first. I thought she's on the phone to her husband. She's reading a book at the same time. You know, if this is a, something you need for your studies, you need to concentrate on what you're reading. So having someone on the phone talking to you in your ear is not going to be helpful. It's not. I have to write it down. Like key points. I write my key points down. Bit like what I do when I watch interviews. I've got my notepad and I'm writing down key points, key words, and things like that. And so she then brings in in another interview. I think it was the third. Was it the interview she did with Smiley? I think it may have been the interview with Smiley because she didn't mention it in the news one. The news one. So I think it was in. Yeah, she's reading a book as well, and I thought, hmm, okay, so you're reading a book and talking to Chris on the phone, right? Oh, and she was falling asleep, apparently, yeah? But now, we've just found out she was already, she fell asleep at 10 o'clock. So what is it, Katie? I believe you fell asleep at 10 o'clock. Right, you was on the phone call with Chris, but you wasn't listening to him. It was just nothing on the end. Because you was asleep. And what woke you up at 12 o'clock? Ooh, could that be Chris coming home? Could that have been CP coming in the back way? Perhaps he's parked his car up somewhere else and come round the back way? Yep. Could that have been him that woke you up at 12? Because apparently Seth said, when you go to sleep, Katie, you're out for the count. You're a heavy sleeper. So what woke you up at 12? I know when I fall asleep, sometimes I get comfy on the sofa and I fall asleep. And I'm not a very good sleeper, so I tend to wake up about an hour or so after I've fallen asleep. Right, so... 
But if I was a heavy sleep and I wish I was and I wish I could get eight hours of solid sleep. God, that would be luxury. No, I don't think they do, Robin. I don't think they do. And have you ever thought, like, remember they said, um, the first day they put him down is missing. No, run away. That was it. Second day, missing. Third day, they did a complete 180 on it all. What did they learn on the Wednesday to make them rethink this? So, you know what I mean? Is that when police probably said to them about the phone call and about her saying on the Monday she fell asleep at 10 and then they've gone through the phones and they've come across this phone call, a three-hour phone call? I wonder if that's why. That makes more sense now. Why they? We kept wondering why it was that. <laughs> Make the law enforcement do like a one eighty on this case on the Wednesday. I think on the Wednesdays when they approached them about that three hour phone call and the fact that she said she was asleep at ten o'clock, but yet she had a three hour phone call from Chris. That's when they started rethinking. That is my opinion, and I'm sticking to that. Unless law enforcement show me something different, I believe the reason they changed their whole focus on the Wednesday after Sebastian went missing. Well, they didn't change it completely. I think they already start. I think they started that investigation on the Wednesday. They just didn't make it public, right? I think they was talking to neighbours more. I was thinking, probably looking at videos from that night. Yeah. And the fact that she made that statement saying she was asleep at 10 o'clock, yet she had a three hour phone call come through. Now, law enforcement, do your job. Think about that. Food. Food. Not. A bump and a bang, a thud. I swear to God, I only have to hear my grandson. And I'm out of here. I'm out of this room. If I'm on a live, I'm out of here. So if ever I disappear on a Friday, so I'm doing a live on a Friday when I've got my grandson here, and I hear something, I, and I disappear, it's because I've heard something. You know what I mean? So... I think that is the reason, well, what possible reason they did that 180 on the Wednesday was the fact that in her statement she said she went to bed, she fell asleep at 10 o'clock. But then on the phone records are showing they had a three hour phone call. Right? So this is why Chris has to make it crystal clear that she was falling asleep. They was talking on the phone and she was falling asleep. But he let her fall asleep. He kept, it's, well, hold on, she was falling asleep for like 10, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, for two hours before he even said to her, you know what, Kat, you know what, Katie, you, you sound like you're falling asleep. Why don't you just go to bed? Why? That doesn't make sense. Why? Why would you keep talking to someone if she was f very tired, if she sounded sleepy? You wouldn't. You'd say, sweetheart, go to bed. You're tired. We can talk tomorrow. You know what I mean? You wouldn't keep that person on the phone for two hours. And like you said, why put the dogs in the kennels, in the cage, when the dogs sleep with her when Chris isn't there? Hmm? So we caught you on that one as well. And Chris dropped that one. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, Katie. You're not the only one dropping big bloopers here. Chris is as well. And we're catching them all. We may not catch them straight away, but we catch them. 
So this is why when people say about YouTubers, oh, you're just doing it for the money, blah, blah, blah. I don't get paid to sod off for much at the moment because I'm not monetized. I'm not. But I will sift through interview after interview, and I'm going to do that now because I want to go through every interview you have done. And I will go through it on slow speed to catch every word you say. Every word. If I have to write it down, and then I'll type it all up, but I will. I'll see if I can, actually, see if I can get the download of the transcripts to all these YouTube lives you've done. Well, something else also said today, right, CP, right, they went to, well, what did they do on the Sunday? They went to uh, BJ's and got something to eat there, yeah, or whatever. They went bowling, so they probably would have got some, some snacks there to eat. Then they come home and then they go out for dinner. God, they're the big eaters. Now, who's going to... For those in the background, where's the baby? As DV would say, where's the baby? Where's your son? Speak out, Katie, because you're going to get thrown under the bus. He's already done it once. When he phoned up on a prank call, making out to someone else, and he turned around then and said, I believe... Seth and Katie know more than what they're saying. Hmm. But I don't believe that. I don't even think Seth knew about this because Seth wasn't even... You wouldn't even speak to Seth. You know what I mean? You never spoke to Seth unless it was something urgent, like you needed new shoes or you needed new glasses and you hadn't got the money. All right. We needed some new shoes. Or oh, maybe some more pull-ups. Hey, right, Katie? Maybe some more pull-ups you needed. Right? I don't like doing lives about this, about KP and CP. And I don't want to be brought into all that craziness. But when I heard that last night, I thought, oh, my God, I missed that. I completely, because at the time, we I think we was all feeling a bit sorry for Katie. You know what I mean? We was all feeling that little bit sorry for her. She's just lost her, her son's gone missing, you know what I mean? This is the first time she's speaking out. And we was all feeling a little bit sorry for you. But then after that second, inter second interview you did with the newscaster, news person, that's when it went belly up. That's when people was spotting something's not right here. What she's saying is not coming in, right? CP and KP are going to throw each, under, each other under the bus. You know, KP won't throw CP under the bus because she's too scared to catch CP. But CP will throw her under the bus. KP scared of Chris. She's scared of Chris and his family. She knows what they are capable of. She saw what went on with Nina. She was there while all that was going on with Nina. She was there. And I'm sure in that interview Nina did, she said that Katie even brought Faith to one of the meetings when they used to have the meeting where she gets to see Faith for half an hour. Katie was there. So Katie is scared of CP and his family. Why the hell, love, did you marry that guy? Why in hell's name did you marry him? I know some women are scared to be on their own. But you know what, sweetheart? It's quite liberating being on your own. It really is. It's really liberating being on your own. Because you're your own boss. 
you spend your own money, you go where you want, you eat when you want, you go to bed when you want, you go out when you want. There's no one there to tell you what to do. It's very liberating. Chris, can you ask your mum where Sebastian is, please? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ask your mum, please, where Sebastian is. Oh, 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 sorry. We can't bring his family into this. We can't bring his family. And you know what I'm going to be doing now? I'm going to start researching into her family. I haven't done that. Because I always just, I've always thought, looking into a family is not going to find Sebastian. But not, we're not finding him at the moment anyway. You know what I mean? Because you are hiding something from us. And we don't know what it is. And we probably never will unless law enforcement tell us. And law enforcement aren't doing anything because they... Which I hope to God and pray they are doing their job. I hope and pray they are actually investigating this case. Like they said they was doing. I hope and pray they are. And that is why they're not saying anything. Why? Because they've not said anything. The last time they said anything was what? 60 days after you went missing? It was when that, after that lag was first seen, which came out not to be CP, uh, not to be Sebastian. And they didn't actually put a, didn't have to come out and do an interview. They put a press release out. They just put a press release out. So that was the last we ever heard of law enforcement. We haven't heard nothing that's saying. Nick Berries, your puppet. Law enforcement, Nick Berries, can you pass some information on to your puppet, Nick Berries? Berries, or oh, whatever his name is. Katie's mum lives over there by Dolly. <laughs> She can't leave the state because she's an hour, so I know. Dolly said uh, he was going to <laughs> go out and put flies out in her in the area. <laughs> oh, that was a while ago now. He said that. I don't know if he did. But no. So, back to this interview. Because he's making it crystal clear. with anyone on social media. Do you want to comment about that again? He doesn't have a social media. Um, okay. And the only friends that he had were a couple of kids in school. Okay. Um, all the kids that have had any interaction with him have been interviewed and asked. Okay. We. Yes, because you wrapped him up in cotton wool and bubble wrap. You never let him have any friends. You never let him socialize with anyone. We, we as parents um, know how social media can be right. and seeing how kids can be easily manipulated. Um, he's very young in mind. Yes, he may be. Right. He's about 15 and he's 15 in age in his body, but his mind is not caught up to his body. Um, but that is something that goes through with autistic children, as everybody would know. Right. Um, but. For the record, we, I am a very strict parent. Oh, we know that. We know you're very strict. We know that now, Chris. And we, that thing about the internet, yes, I agree. It is, uh, it's the devil. The internet can be the devil if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. No one's talking in chat. Come on, give us your opinions. What do you think? Right. I've got 18 or 20 altogether, so I've got 15 on X. M cars. Yeah. It can beat Chris at chess, yeah? It can beat anyone at chess. Christ. This is why I know that lad didn't walk out that didn't leave that house on his own free will. Because chess is a, 
what is it? It's a logical or whatever game. You got to think very about strategic. It's a very strategical game. And um, good to see you, cars. M um, cars. CP, let Katie talk. <laughs> Don't be silly, Robin. Don't be silly. She slipped up at the beginning of this. Did you hear that, MCOS? Did you hear where she slipped up? I'll play it again for anyone who's coming into the chat. I think it's about here. When we come home from having supper that evening, um, he was playing. Mm -hmm. Uh, when he went to bed, when I told him to go to bed, um, he had even, he said, I love you, mama. And he said, I love you, puppies. Um, a little later in the evening, I myself went to bed. And uh, when I went to wake him up for school, he wasn't here. Notice how she didn't even mention that phone call then. Yeah, MCOS is very smart. So, what's that? Uh, yeah, you like to slap three-year-olds in the face and let him, yes? Because she wouldn't let you cut her fingernails. Well, you know what? My granddaughter the other week, um, I don't know if she was in chat at the time, I had a phone call off my daughter-in-law saying, my son had to take her up to the hospital. Why? Because he was clipping her nails. And as he's going to clip her one nail, She's very funny about having her nails, nails clipped. And as she is going to clip it, she pulled the hand away and it caught her skin. So they cleaned it up and they put a plaster on it, got up in the morning, cleaned it again, put a plaster on it. And when she come home, they took it off and that, it was still bleeding. Right? And um, so they took it to the hospital just to make sure everything was okay, and it was. So what they've done now, they're being brought out this, like, nail trimmer, and you can run it across your skin, and it doesn't hurt. And they showed it out, right, but only a dad's, it's only a dad is allowed to do it, no one else. And it's just like a foil. Rather than clipping, it's just foiling the nail down. But you don't feel nothing. So... But that daughter was having her nails clipped, and because she moved her hand, or because she didn't want her nails clipped, it smacked her backhanded her in the face. Autistic children are realistically smart. Than... <laughs> They're very smart. This is why I say the government are losing out here by not giving these parents with these children the full support they can should get. Because these children are very smart. Right? So, anyway. I just love playing. I just love, because as I said, I'm sitting there last night with my coffee in my hand. And I like sort of froze. My mouth, my jaw hit the floor. I don't know how I didn't let my coffee go because it's like, oh my God, did I miss that? Yes, Angie, you missed it. You slipped up as well. Come on. And you did tell me that Sebastian is not a runner. He's not. It's okay. No, Take your time. You know what happened. Sebastian does not have a history of running he, he i mean the young man doesn't go outside very much i mean everybody in the neighborhood knows him um he is very he doesn't go outside but everyone knows him who said that was you you said that didn't you robin you said that yeah uh no i don't i know there's pawns there's a king and a queen and 
God knows what else, but where you put these, how strategically you can... I can do, is it uh, dominoes? No, not dominoes, uh, checkers. I can play checkers, the black and the white things. I can do that. That's how far, that's how my brain strategically works. Black and white. <laughs> Right, so um, to himself, so to speak, yeah. um, between the hours of you know twelve and six, he he has basically vanished. Poof. Walked out of the house, the door was locked and gone. Who doing it? Who doing it? Makes so pleased. None of his shoes are missing. Now you told me that night. That now, Chris, you were at work, you were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, ma'am. And mom, you uh fell asleep on the couch about oh. 10 o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at 9 p.m. and then you got up off the couch and you went to bed and you said that was around midnight. Midnight. And, and nothing was unusual at that point. Everything so, seemed okay. No, she wasn't. No, she fell asleep at 10 o'clock, so she wasn't reading a book like she's supposed to be stu reading for stu uh, a coursework. She wasn't on the phone to Chris. She just fell asleep at 10 o'clock, got up at 12 and went to bed. That's the truth. Right? Something happened between returning home and her going to bed. Right, something happened. There's actually a piece of so to make something very crystal clear, crystal clear. So that way there's transparency across the board. Me and the mom were on the phone at 9 43 or 9 46 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments. Yes, the call logs have been verified, so that's why you've had to bring in. Uh, it was on, I believe, that's when Wednesday, when everything changed. Chris, you said between the hours of 12 and 6 on a different interview, but he didn't want to be bothered. Interview that he didn't want to be bothered. You said between the hours of 12 and 6 on a different interview. Uh, what do you mean by that, Robin? That he didn't want to be bothered? Why? Because he didn't like Sebastian. He didn't. I agree with you there. Yes, the shoe. The shoe commenters have always been weird to me. But, like, is he, he thinks logically. This lad thinks logically, and autistic children like everything in order. What about the thought? Oh, that doesn't come in yet. They've got another. They've got an interview with the news people. They have an interview with Smiley, and then they have the interview with. I think they may have another interview before that one. I can't remember. But then they had another interview with Chronicles of of Olivia. And that's when the thought came into it. Then. So there's like four or five interviews they did before that fucking thought came into this. And that's when she brought in. When was it she brought in about reading the book? I think it was with Smiley. I think it was on Smiley. So I'm going to go for them all. So I think that's when they changed their way of thinking was when they read through her statement for, oh, darn, she's telling us she went to sleep at 10 o'clock, but we got her phone record here saying she was on the phone at 10 o'clock. Listening to this makes, again, makes me think this might have been planned because he feels so confident about the phone call logs. Yeah. Yeah, this is what makes me think now it's been planned. And it's also making me think, did he come home that night? 
did he come home that night? Some people say if he didn't, they wouldn't have his clothes, which is true. They wouldn't have had his clothes. So he must have come home for them to have his clothes, for the law enforcement to take the clothes that he was wearing. Right? And then the law enforcement know what he's wearing because they've got him on video leaving the steakhouse. So they can't give him some, oh, this is what he was wearing. No, that isn't what he wore when you come out of the steakhouse. Said that was in his own will between 12 and 6. Oh, right. Me, me, I'm sorry, but I'm just pl playing this interview because this was the very, very first interview they ever did. And if we're going to catch him out on lies, this is the one. Because we've already, she's already slipped up at the beginning. 25, was it 25 seconds in? Or 25 minutes in? 25 minutes into this, she slipped up big time. And that's why I think on the Wednesday after Sebastian went missing, it said the police did a 180 because they'd seen the statement Kate gave, which was she went to sleep at 10 o'clock, woke up about 12 and went to bed. But then her phone records are showing she was on the phone at 10 o'clock. So they've actually pulled them up about this. Spoke to him, oh, we found a discrepancy. And that's when Chris probably turned around and said, no, no, she was on the phone to me, but she was feeling, she was very sleepy. You know what I mean? But that isn't what she said in her statement. I fell asleep at 10 o'clock. Not, I was very sleepy. But I think that's when they did that one out. Because something had to happen between... The Monday he went missing and the Wednesday when police did like a 180. And I think that was when they started the investigation on the quiet, right? Still doing the search, but started the investigation. Because then on the Sunday, they told him they are pulling back the search, right? And going into the investigation side of it. They even told Seth there's no sign of Sebastian leaving that house. No sign. Now surely if he put the rubbish bin out, the dogs would have picked up the scent. I don't see how she could lie about the clothes because they've got the video of him coming out of the... Uh, Texas Roadhouse, so they know what he was wearing. So if she told, gave them something else, they told, well, this isn't what he was wearing when you come out of the steakhouse. I well, thank you anyway. I do. Thank you. I know, I don't like, I don't like listening to this guy. I was going to put a bucket down the side, by the side of me. A uh, uh, bucket. Two finger in the mouth, bucket. Because that's how he makes me feel. But I swear to God, I'm going to go through every interview now because I've probably missed something on some of the other interviews. Interviews which I haven't really took... Like Smiley's interview, I didn't really take much notice of that one. So I want to go through that one again. Not on here, I'll go through it on my own. If I find something, then I'll highlight it. If I don't, then I don't. So... Just bring it forward a bit. In school, okay. um, all the kids that have had any interaction with him have been interviewed and asked. Okay. We we as parents um, know how social media can be. Right. And seeing how kids can be easily manipulated. Um, he's very young in mind. Yes, he may be, right. he's about 15 and he's 15 in age in his body, but his mind is not caught up to his body. Um, but that is something that goes through with autistic children, as everybody would know. Right. Um, but for. Excuse me, Chris. Chris, not everyone knows ev anything about autistic children. Not everybody knows. 
You know what I mean? Those who've got autistic children would know. Right? Or those who know someone with an autistic child or grandparents with an autistic grandchild would know. But that's not everybody. So think before you speak, Chris, because not everybody knows. For the record, we I am a very strict parent. I do. He does not have social media, not in our household. He doesn't uh, online gain. He, I mean, I am, I'm pretty strict that when it comes to that kind of oh, situation. We know. We know well, that's good. Like that's good, Chris, that, that you have control of that because social media can be very dangerous for young kids um, because they don't realize who they may be talking to on social media. So it's always good to have that awareness and to make sure you're monitoring, you know, what your kids are doing. So I had asked you both, you know, did you have any idea what would make Sebastian want to suddenly leave the house? And you told me, well, that's the million dollar question that everybody wants to know. I'll no, Chris, the million dollar question is, where's Sebastian? That's the million dollar question. Where is Sebastian? We don't care about him going out the front door because we know he didn't go out that front door. Where's Sebastian? So rag. All the detectives, they've all asked that same question. What is it that happened that caused him to leave the house? Um, and I know you must be so worried and so concerned. Is there anything, if if Sebastian were listening to this live stream right now, if you knew that he was out there, what would you want to tell him? That we love you and to come home. I mean, it's that's the first proper plea of some sort I have ever heard her say. I love you. And I want you to come home. And you could hear it in her voice. That's the first proper sort of plea. After that, it's like nothing. You know what I mean? It's pretty simple. This boy has a very large family that everybody is asking the question. Where are you? We love you. And please come home. Yes. We definitely need to find him as soon as possible. If you live in this area. See, this interview was done on the 3rd of March. Right? So he went missing on the 26th. 27th, 28th, 29th. When was the 3rd of March? I can't remember. But it was before the police put a cut. Now I know. Hold on. I'm going to have to check something. When was the third of March? I'll get my calendar. Right, I've got a calendar. The 3rd of March was a Sunday, right? He went missing on the 26th. So it's like a week later. A week after he went missing, they did the first interview, right? And then they did that other interview with the news people was it on the Monday it was released? I can't remember. I'll have to look into that. But this was done on the Sunday, a week after Sebastian had gone missing. Right. If they monitor Sebastian, he will still be here. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. CP isn't worried about... No, he isn't. He isn't robbing. He isn't worried about Sebastian. 
And that's what makes me feel sick knowing that. I don't think he likes children, full stop. Please search your property every day. He could be on the move. Just because you've already searched your property one time doesn't mean that you don't need to continue to search your property on a daily basis just to be sure. If you have a lot of land, it needs to be searched, you know, just to be sure because he may be lost. He may be somewhere and he does he can't find his way back. So that's why it's very critical. Can you talk to me about the search and rescue efforts? Are they searching on land, air? They also have dive teams there. What can you tell us about that? So currently, um, they, as of today, the National Guard was also brought in to help with the search. But they have had fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, um, horseback ATVs side by side, um, door to door, scouring every neighborhood possible. Um, I mean, the outreach from the community and various counties has been extremely welcoming, loved. I mean, it, it, it's, we've been told this is probably one of. Now, this was released on the third, right? This was put out on the third. I think this interview was done before the third. She didn't release it straight away. It was done before the third, right? Because it was on the third, a week later, after he went missing, which would be the third, he went missing on the 26th, on the Monday. And by the Sunday, they, they were scaling back the search, and that's when they told them they were scaling back the search on the Sunday. So this interview, I think, was done round about any time, I think, from the 27th to the 3rd, any time between, within that week. It wasn't done on the Sunday. It was released on the Sunday. Right? People do lives, do... Right, and they don't release it straight away. Like when you do a live, you do a live, and then you have to download it onto your laptop or computer, and then upload it onto YouTube. Right, she's she's downloaded it, but she hasn't uploaded it onto YouTube. Right until the third. This was done before law enforcement and now so scaling back. Because otherwise, he just said in this interview, as of today, law enforcement are scaling back. He doesn't. But in the news release one, he does. Right? So I think that one was done on the 4th. I think the second interview where they did it with the news people was done on the 4th and was released that day. Or was done on the third and released on on the fourth. Because they have to edit and everything. They did a lot of editing on that. A lot of editing. So let's continue. Is anyone still feeling sick? I'm really sorry if you're feeling sick. I really am. One of the largest searches that they've conducted with so much input that it, it's it's a case to be studied for sure. You have a lot of people that are praying and supporting you right now. Was his ask, would he be able to ride a city bus? Um, nothing is off the table as far as abilities. Could the young man get on a bus? I'm sure he could. We've never done it before. We've never rode a city bus, so I don't think he understands the process. Um, he doesn't have any uh, sense of money. He may have, like, let's say a $20 bill in his hand, but he doesn't truly understand what $20 would get him. He's good right. at money, but he doesn't I understand. understand money. And single mom says, does he want his real father? Maybe I'm just asking. Well, it turns out, single mom, that... You know, he sees his real father every other weekend and uh, the real father 
uh, he is heavily involved in this situation and is aware, and he doesn't know where Sebastian is either, correct? Correct. I mean, I can tell you this. His father's very much involved in his life. Yes, very much involved in his life. The relationship between all three of us as parents is not your common one. I mean, me and the father talk on a regular basis. We call each other. We talk, hey, have we heard anything? How's he doing? Is he acting up? Um, you know, I mean, it's it's not, there's no really animosity in between the parents. That's good. That's good. Discovering the truth. Thank you for being here. They say, did he have any special interest like trains, parks, friends, maybe a school bus route that he loved? My son elopes and loves trains, so he heads to the tracks. He um, loves playgrounds. Yeah, he loves playgrounds. I mean, he he loves to play. I'll give him that. Um, well, don't worry. Friends I wise, wise, playing it again. Friends. Sebastian, sure. his idea of his friend is right now is what he has two kids that he talks to at school. But he is extremely socially awkward, and so it's very difficult for him to make friends, uh, which has been this boy's only lifelong dream. If I mean, he, he Christmas, what do you want for Christmas? I want friends. Birthday, I want friends. Anything that he can do to get a friend, he would love to do it, which is potentially dangerous because that... Yes, he wanted friends. Right, so what do you do? Oh, yeah, you keep him at home. You don't arrange with those parents of those two other children he goes to school with for maybe meeting up somewhere. I don't know. A park one day. You sit and talk to the mother while watching your kids play. You don't do anything like that, do you, Katie? On a Saturday, you could give a ranch to meet up with one of those kids, but one of those kids going to a park somewhere and they could have had some fun like kids do. Uh, my my grandson is always meeting up with his uh if they go out somewhere and a lot of it is by coincidence but if they go out somewhere with them say the mum and the dad they go out somewhere with my grandson and my granddaughter it's highly possible they're likely to run into someone he knows from school. Right? And there's a young girl that whose grandfather lives in the same block I live in. I think she's a lower floor than me. But she comes to visit on the weekends. And sometimes if she sit, if she's here, if Alice is here and we go over to the play area by me and she's there. She's all over Ellis because she understands Ellis. Even though she's not autistic herself, she understands Ellis. You know what I mean? And she, she joins in with his way of thinking, his way of his mind works. He goes on about meteoroids saying, oh, God, um, the mushroom cloud and things like that. Me too, I was never thinking of at that age. All, all the mushroom cloud. Yep. I was thinking of my dolls. You know what I mean? And what I what I, I think to put on my dolly that day. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um they didn't arrange for no meetups with any of the parents. There's two kids in here from school who we got on with. Why can she arrange a meetup. Why did he have to be so enclosed in? I don't get that. I never have. Could open up doors if for somebody to say, hey, I'll be your friend and potentially cause harm. Yes, we said that. Kim Holmes asked if there's any cameras in the area. And I did see, Kim, that they were asking for people that had any ring doorbell footage or any businesses that had camera footage. Talk to us about that, Chris. We did speak about that briefly earlier about the people getting all the footage, but they haven't found anything. Um, our entire neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods have voluntarily and with generosity given up any video footage that they have, they've, they've got. I mean, 
they have let the, the, the departments come in and view and monitor. Um, so as far as cameras, everybody has turned over everything. There's thousands of hours of stuff that they are combing through to try to find an answer. It looks like Tish is local to the area. She said, I go to the grocery store or anywhere and our eyes are peeled looking for him. I work at a local restaurant and I'm checking cars as they come through the drive through every day. Bless you, Tish. I know this family is very grateful. Um, Discovering the Truth says, so he probably knows the route to his father's house. So maybe he was in the process of heading in that direction. Is that that has, yeah, that has not been ruled out. Um, I mean, like I said, the search that they are conducting is extremely widespread and thorough. Mm -hmm. um, so every time you mention Seth's, where Seth lives, why is it then Katie gives you a little nudge? Like, Shh, you shouldn't be saying that. Why? That's why I say to the searchers out there who are doing a brilliant job, by the way, fair dues to you all, every one of you searchers out there, Try checking the route. Now, there's two ways to Clarksville, two routes, right? It splits. The roads are, you can go up one way or you can go around another. Well, there's actually three ways, right? That, those routes need to be checked. Okay? So, please. If anyone's got a drone who's out there searching, get permission to go on some. If, if you can just fly your drone across their land, you don't, don't even have to go on their land. Just say, Look, I've got a drone. I'm looking for this child. I'm looking for any signs of this child. I won't be on your land. I've got a drone. I'm just going to be flying over your land. I will not be flying over your house. I'll be flying over the open land and, the and over the trees or whatever. Get the drones in there. I know law enforcement have done a full-scale search. But come on. That's a big giveaway when she's giving you the elbow every time you mention Clarksville. That's not else. We can't mention Clarksville either. We can't mention his family, CP's family. We can't mention Clarksville. Um, so... Nobody is ruling that out as a possibility. But normally when he wants to go to his dad's, he just says so. And we just call his dad. Yeah, I mean, it's dad will come down here. We meet him halfway. I mean, there's this. He's never wanted to go to his dad's and not been able to go. Let's put it that way. Right. I mean, Mark, you thank you for being a member for six months. Um, the, all of this is very, very helpful to help us. Hold on. Did you just say if he wanted to go to his dad's? His dad would either come down to pick him up or we'd meet him halfway. Mm hmm. Okay. So could she have dropped him off? Perhaps they had an argument after leaving the road steakhouse. And he's probably turned around and said, I can't wait to move to my dad's. And she's took him halfway there and said, Right. Well, there you are then, off you go. And kicked him out of the car halfway there. I don't think so, but it's a possibility. God, oh, I hate this. I've even speeded it up. You know, better understand the situation that we're dealing with. Um, and I did see a post on Facebook that it looked like everybody was asked to wear green on Friday because green is Sebastian's favorite color. Um, what else can you tell us about Sebastian? Um, this, he is an avid Minecraft fan. Um, loves the color green. Um, he's got the goof, the goofiest and quirky smile in the world. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think anybody could could um, mimic it. To be honest with you, um, he looks like he's such a sweet young man. He. Um, Loves to dance. That boy can he'll dance his tail off. That's hey, sure. that's there's nothing wrong with that. Dancing is good for you. It's good exercise too. Good. Um, I just really hope they can find some answers. Now, I did ask you guys because, um, you know, I know that sometimes when we're looking for autistic children that go missing, a lot of times people are concerned that they may be attracted to go towards the water. So talk to us about that. Is he is he a good swimmer? Does he like to get in the water? I think you did mention some things about that to me earlier. Um, 
He's a good swimmer. So he he's a fish in the water. I'm gonna tell you right now that he, if there's if, but here's the distinction. He is not a child that likes to get dirty. He can't stand his hands dirty. He can't stand bugs. He is fearful of flies and things. So if he swims, he is a pool pool kid. He's not a I'm a river and a stream kind of kid. He is swimming pool bound. Discovering the truth. I'm sure that they are probably looking into that. Now, I know that you said there was some misinformation that was going around <clears throat> and you wanted to make a clarification. You did tell me that TBI, uh, you know, was assisting, but that there was some confusion. People thought that FBI was actually assisting in this case. Talk to me about um, what you spoke about earlier to me on our phone call about how FBI is uh, that they were consulted um, and the card team. Um, you know, was they were, I guess there is a discussion going on as to whether he qualifies um, as, you know, for the child abduction response yeah. team. So he, the FBI is not physically on the ground. Uh, somewhere in, in one of the news clips, I think it was reported that the FBI had made it on the ground. They're not. Um, TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, has reached out to the behavioral analysis team. Please. You forgot to make it crystal clear. Or their cart team. And they are trying to work with them yeah, just, from a distance. Oh, not God. They're not physically God. present uh, to help in, in any way, form, shape that they can render their assistance. Okay. Um, light and sound, thank you for being here. Have burner phones been looked into? I know some teens sneak phones from their parents or maybe his computer use at school to we see if he has been checked. Evidence of a secret phone. Okay, good, good. Because digital evidence is really important. They want to make sure that he's not speaking to anybody. This is such an unusual case. Um, this case is very extremely uh, unusual. Um, like I said before, we are pretty strict when it comes to certain things. Um, as far as comms, communication, electronic devices, mm -hmm. there was only one phone that he had. It was extremely locked down. He had access to his phone, his text message to only his contacts list, uh, a camera, and a calculator. And that is it. He's a pretty happy kid, usually. He seems like it. And I know that you love him very much. I know that you, uh, I can remember earlier in our conversation, you you were referring to him as Bubba. And I that's think that's I sweet. I call my son Bubba also, so that really tore at my heartstrings because my son. Has anyone ever, has anyone heard you mention his name, Lou? Has anyone in the last 40, what, well, 20, 20 some minutes? Because they didn't come into the live until about 20 past, 20 minutes. See. So for the last 20, 25, 30, 20. 21 minutes. Has anyone noticed if she said it, Sebastian's name? Nope. She hasn't. Neither of them. Neither of them have said his name. Son, he's 30, but he's still Bubba to me. So um, <laughs> it just, that name is going to stick forever. It's just how it is. Cindy Caton, thank you. Thank you for being here. She says, are there any old wheels that maybe he accidentally fell in or any areas or mines that he, he might be at risk of coming in contact with? I know sometimes those things occur out in Tennessee. Um, the divers, have they have they found any possible leads? Um, I know that I heard that there was a possible pond that they were draining. You did tell me they were searching all of the pipes. Yes. So when it comes to, uh, to, to address her, her question as far as wells and things, I'm sure there's plenty of those around here. Um, They're searching them. They actually pulled data for all the caves, uh, underground voids, all of that stuff that could be. Chris, while you're talking, Katie's telling you something. Why don't you shut your gob and let Katie talk? Please. Accessible. They brought in teams from all over the state. That specialize in either cave explorations, um, water recovery, rescues. Uh, we don't know that they have drained a pond. I can say that much, but they okay. have searched, dived, them. dived. They've dived them all for sure. They've okay. walked. I couldn't tell you how many miles of creeks and waterways, and they've used cameras. They, you know, the sewer. Oh, do Chris, 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 Chris. You don't know if they drained any. Wasn't you the one who said? Come to me, I've got all the information because I know they drained that retention pond. 
Uh huh. And they did that within the first couple of days. So you know they drained the retention pond. It, it's not really the sewers they're looking in. It was the it's the drainage pipes. Nobody. So that that that's for clarification. Sewer pipes. We're not going to find a child in. Those right. are enclosed and secured. But the runoff, uh, water runoffs, were all searched by a dive team. Okay. And I know Ginger Snap said is law enforcement looking into the possibility that he met a friend through Minecraft. I hope that they would just go ahead and vet all of that just to make sure. Um, because you never know. I'm not really sure how all that works because I'm not a gamer, but I know that there are ways that you can communicate like via Xbox because my son is a gamer. So, um, and Gabrielle, I believe that they, you guys were at the Costco on Saturday. That's when you took the picture of him, correct? Yes. My okay. wife was at Costco on Saturday. Yeah. Not the Saturday. that's in the flyer where it says optimism was on a Saturday. Right. Thank you for making that crystal clear, Chris. So why did Katie shove the picture on her phone into Seth's face on the day he went missing and stayed so much like, like look he was he was happy there he was happy or something like that Chris Seth, Seth even knew that was the photo taken from the Saturday he knew that right so it doesn't make sense. Why would she shove the phone in his face and look, there he is, he was happy there. That was on the Saturday, Katie. Have you not got any photos from the Sunday when he was having such a fun day? Come on, Katie, you took one on the Saturday. Why didn't you take no photos of him on the Sunday? That's my question to you, Katie. Uh, just think of a one, just think of a question to you. They were at Good. BJ's on Sunday. Um, okay. And, what and when it comes to restaurant or no, they are all wholesale, uh, like a commissary style stores where they sell in bulk. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so Costco so, Saturday, BJ's on Sunday. Yes. He loves to eat all the samples, and BJ's is new, so I took him. You're a good mom. And when it comes to like the one mentioned about Minecraft, like I stated before, he does not have any way to come with anybody on, on any form of online gaming. That is extremely restrictive. We don't allow that because of what can come of it. They combed all of the electronics. Um, I can tell you this without with no hesitation. Anything and everything we have given to the police and any other law enforcement to have them completely scan, uh, validate everything, and they are they are currently... I mean, everything is empty. I mean, they, they were like, you guys are pretty good. I said, yes, sir. We don't believe in allowing the kids to communicate uh, through social media or through any type of gaming. It uh, looks like Missing in USA says, why are they wanting camera footage from Sunday afternoon? Because that, we can, that we cannot release right now. Okay, that is not I something understand. that has been authorized. Because they want to know. If he was alive, they want to know not so much from the Sunday afternoon because they've got footage from the Texas Roadhouse at 6 30. They are looking more for footage after 6 30 because this so called loving mother took a photo of her son on a Saturday. But didn't take one photo of her son on the Sunday. He was with family. I, when I go out with my grandson, I'm always snapping photos of him. Always. If I've got my granddaughter, I'm always snapping photos of her when we go out. Because they're too darn cute. You know what I mean? So... Why was there no photos from the Sunday? Please, can someone tell me? Why did this loving, caring, sweetheart of a fecking mother 
of the year not take any photos on the Sunday. Throws us to uh, right. put out to the public. And we respect that 100%. Ginger Snap says, I was reading that his favorite song is Eye of the Tiger. That's a great song. <laughs> he, he's got an eclectic taste of music. He is a, he's a fan of Eddie Vedder. He oh, likes well, he's Survivor. Great. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's young man has a very eclectic taste of music. Likes and you told me that Taylor he Swift, loves to uh, play chess. Harry Underwood. And he loves to play chess, he right? He has a crush on Taylor Swift. Ooh, he has a, oh, well, um, his boy, her boyfriend better watch out then. Um, was 911 allowed to be called, Rhonda asks. Uh, on the cell phone, is that what she's referring to? Yes, I believe so. Is that what you're asking, All Rhonda? Devices, <clears throat> all devices that have communications um, have the ability to call 911. Believe it or not, most cell phones that are not, not even connected to service have an ability to actually call 911. Yeah, you could pick one up off the shelf at a store and most will call. Yeah. Well, didn't you call 911 on your federal thing. That's not a... A service provided that is like a federal thing, right? We restrict safety features, even if we could. Yeah, safety safety is not restricted in this house. Okay, I do have one other question before I before I read what was his is saying. Um, it was something I was going to ask you. Um, let's go ahead and do was his question right now. Um, Shackle Island Road and New Shackle Island Road are they in the same area? New Shackle Island Road. Um, Runs, par runs parallel to Long Island. Old Shackle Island Road um, is actually farther directionally. It would actually be south in front of the hospital, the Hendersonville Hospital. That is roughly, I think, four or five miles from our house. Okay. Okay. That single mom, that's your favorite song too? Now, something I do do want to ask you is because I've been I've been watching social media because that's what I do. I share missing cases on lots of different social media platforms. And I was very disappointed when you told me that people were harassing you and attacking you. Um, is there anything that you want to put to rest while you're here tonight or make clear to the public about this situation? I know you told me there was a statement that you wanted me to make um, about you and the mom and the dad. So if you want to make any clarification about that, you have free reign to do so. We will not allow you to be disrespected here on Please, this platform. Please, please, like to him. Um, it, I, I, I have no malice or ill intent toward anybody. Everybody has an opinion. Of course. Um, but what is factual is that the father, the mother, and myself have been extremely cooperative. We have been vetted. We have been checked out. We have been questioned and everything of that nature. And literally have been cleared. There is no wrongdoing. There is no negative impact put from the parents or any of the family you know um and I, it's hard for a lot of folks i mean there's I, I will be honest and say this out loud i have a custody case that is currently going on in another state which has been brought to public light because people feel that they want to judge and think that they understand what's currently going on and they don't because of that i am being looked at in a very foul foul way um i I don't need to repeat anything that's being said, but, right, you know, but and people it's that are okay. people that's probably seen it on social media. And I want you to be able to have the opportunity to defend yourself. We have 248 people watching right now. And I'm sure that anyone that's watching this on the live stream, um, please respect this family. I mean, you can't have an idea of possibly what they are going through. And it's really not any of your business what is going on. And I understand that you do see your other child, which, you know, and. That doesn't have anything to do with Sebastian. And you guys are on good terms with his father. There's not like there's any uh, custody battle between the mother and, and Sebastian's father. I mean, obviously, if he wants to see his father, you guys told me that, you know, you you just plan to meet up and it's, you know, it's no big deal. So um, I've read a couple of heinous things that people are saying, and it just really upsets me to know that people are just going to that without having all of the information and knowing that law enforcement has interviewed, interrogated everyone in your family. They have looked into you. They have all of your devices and that they basically cleared you guys of any involvement in Sebastian's disappearance. And I just wanted the public to be able to hear you say that because you do have the right to defend yourself because it's not a like you said. Um, can I make it crystal clear? 
no one, and I mean this, not even Seth. So no one has been cleared. Chris, we're not, we wasn't born yesterday. We're not stupid. And I'm sure there's people in that chat when they've heard some of what you said. Like, I'm being polite and being respectful or just not saying nothing. If they don't want, if they don't believe you and they've got to be polite and respectful, they won't say nothing. Because I was brought up to say, if you can't, if you've got nothing nice to say, then say nothing. So that's what I do. I don't say anything unless it really, they really pee me off like you do, Chris. Then I will say something. And even if you're sitting right next to me, face to face. I'd say the same. Because you know what, Chris? Little boy, you don't scare me. People like you do not scare me. Earlier, it's not about you. It's about finding Sebastian. Right. Yes. Um, and I just don't want to have people to be dragging you around on social media. Isn't it already difficult enough that your child is missing? Oh, that's, I mean, that's beyond words. This is a feeling that I'm going to tell you right now. I don't I care. Wish this Nobody should ever have to endure. It is not something that should ever be wished upon for anyone. Now, I do see Miranda. Um, Miranda has a child uh, that has is special needs as well. And we've covered a case on my channel involving her child in the school system here on my platform. Um, so Miranda is a very strong advocate for kids that have special needs and them getting fair and equal treatment. And she says, how is his skills on walking around on hills or without a trail? Because my son would stumble if he had to step over a one inch rock or any form of incline. So, I mean, does he, is he able to walk good? Does, I mean, how is he able to navigate on his own? I mean, does he, is he able to walk good? Can you hear me? I see the last two. Hello. Did I lose you guys? Can you hear me? He's putting himself on mute, I bet you. Chris, are you there? Can you hear me? Trev, are you there? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Okay, maybe Chris lost signal. We'll give them a few minutes to come back. They may have had to, to mute out. Thank you, Far Q. I appreciate it. Um, Chris, we're not able to hear you. They may have um, been, they may have cut, gotten cut out with their Wi Fi service. So if you need to come back, please let us know. I'm going to go over here to the chat while we wait for Chris. They may have had a phone call or something to come in. So we'll give them a few minutes. No rush. Um, discovering the truth said when my son was nonverbal, he had a speech device that was supposedly blocked from the company so he couldn't go to any websites and somehow he bypassed it they're smarter than you think wow discovering the truth that is incredible and he is a high functioning autistic young man so um th they have the and look chris dropped he must have lost his signal guys but he, he'll probably come back oh here he is here he is oh, chris can you hear me now yes ma'am can you hear me okay that's like a verizon commercial <laughs> can you hear me <laughs> i thought that was I the figured you might have lost signal yeah it's okay we're uh it We'll, we'll figure it out. We get it back every once in a while. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. He's, um, he's, he's high functioning. I mean, he's he's fully able to hold a conversation and he walks and he loves to run. Okay, well, that's good. And Rhonda wants to know if he has a special button on his phone. Uh, no. On his phone? I don't. Mm -mm. Okay. But he doesn't have his phone. Yeah, and he left his phone at home, so he doesn't have it. Was his says, I'm local and I'm trying to get a direction. Thank you. And says something about exit five. Are you guys close to exit five? No. Well, that depends. You can access off of what they call uh, New Shackle Island Road, which I believe is exit six. Mm, yes, I uh, see. Thank you, Mrs. Clem. Yeah, I believe it's exit six and exit seven will be in Indian Lake. But uh, as far as the special button on his phone, 
Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah, me either. And I know Discovering the Truth said that, you know, her child was able to get around the the security system that they had kind of set up on the phone so they couldn't access the websites uh, to that it was locked. And apparently he got around it and okay. was able to access it. And I guess that's kind of what they were talking about, um, you know, in a couple of texts in the chat. So that's what I was trying to address. You know, a lot of people that come to my streams, they have children that are also autistic. My, so they deal with with a lot of situations and they may can understand some of the things that you may be have you know be dealing with at this moment i can only imagine what you're going through not knowing where he is um, um we without publicizing our address best i can tell you is we are off uh by the beach area in that kind of area is where mm -hmm. they predominantly been focusing their searches right um when it comes to the special button no um just so some parents are aware even if you lock down your child phone some children can actually turn their phone into safe mode which would bypass the parental locks and then allow a child to go on the internet there is a way to block that um you would have to look that up that's too much in deep and depth to go into but no i mean when i say we we're strict we lock it down we lock it down okay well that's good to know david bryant thank you so much for being here david says hey one question do you think he would have stuck to roads or do you think he could have went off into the wooded areas that is ex that's hard to say we don't really have an answer but all i can say is uh, every avenue is being searched regardless of woods roads anything everything that can be searched is currently being searched reckless ellis thank you for being here reckless ellis says i'm not saying he did this whatsoever but i did see a screenshot from facebook where he yelled at the news and told them to get off his property is there any truth to that well, Reckless, I'll let them speak for themselves. But if the news was on my property, I might yell at them to get off my property too. <laughs> so I have not, I have not spoke to any news crew that have been physically on my property. I have spoken to a news crew that was down the street and just asked them politely, do not film my house. They mm -hmm. were filming the police doing something and that was perfectly okay. They gave me the word. We shook hands and politely moved on. So no, I mean, as far Thank as yelling you. at the news, no. Okay, well, thank you for clarifying that. I hope that helps, Reckless Ellis, and thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see. Um, that's right, Leva Tabibur. These are real people. Focus on the missing baby. Exactly. Thank you for being here, Miss Julie. It's so good to see you. Um, that's right. We all know that the child is in danger and needs to be home where he's safe, and that's all we need to know. I just want to make sure that people understand, like, this family is really going through it, and the focus needs to be on the child. So, um, and we just appreciate anyone that's able to, to get out there. Now, do they also have search dogs that have been out, uh, helping assist in the search? Yes, ma'am. They have brought in dogs from various locations from, uh, I believe from even other states as well as other areas within the state. So it is deeply, deeply being checked. Okay, I'm going back over here. I see David Bryant's left another comment in chat. Okay, gotcha. We'll keep searching, praying for your families. I just posted multiple pictures from what my dog has found searching, and you can feel free to reach out if you would like me to search anywhere. So it sounds like David may have um, some search dogs himself. David, if you want to send me an email um, or reach out to me with Facebook Messenger, if you have any information that you would like for me to pass on to the family, I'll be more than happy to do that, and we appreciate that so very much. Um, Jennifer Jennings, thank you for being here. Jennifer says, how long has he been married to the mom? Isn't he Seth's son? Who is searching for this boy, mom, dad, or who? Well, it sounds like there's a lot of people involved, including the mother, the father, the stepfather. Um, and no, mother, um, and stepfather. When you say how long has he been married to the mom, are you referring to Chris on panel? Julio, thank you so much for being here. Chris always treated my girls and son with nothing but kindness when we worked together. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Julio. I know that probably means a lot to him. That's right, Jennifer. I think everybody is searching. It doesn't sound like there's any animosity um, with anybody that's going on here. So, um, and please be respectful in the chat. Um, if you want to come in here and attack the, uh, the moderators can show you to the door. There's no need to announce your departure. Light and Sound says, I pray he wasn't being bullied at school. I imagine classmates who knew him have been interviewed. And yes, I do believe Chris said that earlier. And did he typically take his phone places with him, guys, or did he normally leave it at home? 
believe it or not, it was actually a struggle to get him to carry his phone. Um, he's not like your typical teenager. He, he's not these kids that, you know, got to stick their head in the phone. He's not. He's not glued to it. He's not. You know, because of his restrictions, you know, he knows that what it's for. It's a tool. It's not an entertainment device. Um, I mean, it, he had his struggles with doing basic, simple things. And I mean, it was a constant reminder, a constant this. It, and all three parents have been extremely positive and, and constantly trying to get him like, hey, we got to do this, bud. We got to do that. Take your phone. Take your phone. Teach him to, to, to be responsible and to think about it. You know, and then um, Julio, I can contest. I mean, we work together out in San Diego, so he's amazing. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Um, let me just take care of something here in chat real quick. Um, Jennifer, I appreciate you being here. We welcome all opinions, but we're just it. How long he's been married to the mother is irrelevant with Sebastian being missing. So I hope that you have a wonderful night, but respectfully, I'm going to have to remove you from chat because it's a distraction. And we are focused on talking about Sebastian and about his case. And I hope you have a wonderful night and please come back again. Okay, let's get back over here to the chat. I try to, to not get distracted <laughs> when we have these situations, but we just don't have time for that. Um, I'm not going to allow disrespect and uh, my moderators know that. So, um, I appreciate my mods in here. Uh, Y'all get put some hearts and hands up for the mod. Well, I'm lagging off. I'm lagging off. Can't take no more. <laughs> but I was also watching, I can't think of the name of the YouTuber. And Punk Rock Summer. Anyway, I was watching a channel last night as well. And she did a drive around the area, just quickly, because she's going to three key points where she wanted to go. So she went up to the, she was with someone else in a car, and I went up to the construction site entrance. I drove up and past the house. And as I went past the house, I noticed the van wasn't there. So it looks like her works has come and collected the van. Now, that's always been a big issue to me, that van. Because when I was on Nancy Grace, they said they couldn't give out the high SRB. Right? They couldn't give out the details of the van. Right? Because they hadn't got permission from her works. Well, I'm sorry, but the van was sitting in the driveway. If anyone wanted to, they could have drove up or walked past and wrote the registration number down. So what was the harm in telling them the make and everything of the car, of the van? I couldn't understand that. Now, did the law enforcement get permission to search that van? That's another big thing I want to know. Did law enforcement search that van? Because did they get permission to search the van? Why? Because it's that's been a big iffy point with me, that van. But it does make me think, did he come home that night? But I still keep going back to the point where if they if he hadn't come back, they wouldn't have the the mother of the year wouldn't have had the clothes to give to law enforcement. Right. So something they did I believe they did come back that night. So somehow no, no one picked them up coming back. No one. Oh God. No one picked them coming up. Or did they? Right? Or did they? Right? So, I truly believe something happened. I think an argument started on the way home between her and her son, her and Sebastian. I think this argument continued when they got home. He was all hyped up from his, days out, his day out. His activities, 
He had a sensory overload. He wasn't going to sleep. The medication wasn't working because it was too hyped up. Now, did she give him more medicine? Or did she use some of her own medication if she had sleeping tablets? We don't know. I hope not. I hope she didn't. And if he, if she had, could that... I don't think there was a thud. I'm taking that thud out of my... Out of my thoughts, because I don't believe that happened. Something happened that night, and she's just added to the story. Like, if you watch the uh, 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 Chronicles of Olivia... Right, you see how she would nudge him, or he go <coughs> if she was going off, rambling on a bit too much, a bit like me, right? But the fact that she was then having to go with her fingers on the table, like, uh, uh, well, we did, uh, uh, and she's using her fingers on the table, and then when she got to the third one, she said three way. It's like she had to remember about the three-way phone call. Yeah. I hope they have, because, or oh, have law enforcement took the van? Have law enforcement taken the van? But I'm sure if law enforcement had took, them, took the van, they'd put it on a trailer, on like a big trailer thing. And neighbours would have been telling JLR because he's got his contacts around there. They would have been saying, oh, We've got some information for you. You know what I mean? He's got his little contacts around there. So I don't think law enforcement took the van. I think the works have been and took the van because the van is not outside on the driveway now, now at all. So is she still working for them? That's another question. Because it's now been, what, nearly 100 days? It's got to be 100 days now. That has been missing. So, and that's 100 days she hasn't been at work. So, have, have they laid her, have they sort of like laid her off? Well, you can't come in, you're not coming into work, so we'll take your van. You know what I mean? It's our property, we're entitled to take our van. But there's still some niggling, especially with what I've heard at the beginning of this sickening interview. When I heard her say, when I heard Duchess run through what they spoke about and Duchess said, Sebastian went to bed at nine. You, no, you fell asleep at ten. Sebastian went to bed at nine. You woke up about twelve and went to bed. Right? But then, as the time goes on, uh, then Chris comes in and makes it crystal clear that they was on the phone. So I was seriously think on that Wednesday, that was what, this, well, this medicine should add up, but perhaps she did give him something else. Someone mentioned edibles. That made me edibles. Isn't that the illegal edibles? Surely not. Well, illegal in some states, but illegal in others. Surely not. But something definitely happened in that house. And I don't think she moved him on the night time. Because someone would have picked up that car moving on their cameras. I'm sorry. 
but you cannot tell me them houses. One, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. About six houses would not have picked. Well, even more than that, because you've got houses got on Kelling, Kelling Road. So you're telling me not one house will get picked her up leaving that night. Not one house. Not possible. Yeah, he has. He's everywhere, isn't he? I'll give it to him. He's everywhere. He's having to take it a bit slower, though, at the moment. But he's everywhere. He can be in one state in the morning, then in the afternoon he'll be somewhere else. He's everywhere. How he keeps track of all this, all these cases he's covering, I do not know. I really don't. Right, but um, it's just I'm guessing she's not working there, so they took the van back. But hard to say. I'm so, I think the same. Sr. Srb. I don't think she's working for the company now. Wow, well, come on. It's not making the company look good, is it? That an employee of theirs, their son went, her son goes missing and she had no house cameras. Oh, dear. And she works for a company that, and she installs them. She works for a company that does house secure, home security. So <laughs> it's, it didn't make them look good, did it? Come on. It's like saying, having someone work for, oh, well, I don't know. Um, next thing. I don't know. What else wouldn't, wouldn't make you look good? Well, losing your child doesn't make anyone look good. Uh, she is, and she's hiding behind Chris. But I can't understand if something happened that night and it was an accident, why doesn't she just say THC is illegal in Tennessee, so yes, that would be a problem. Plus, he's underage. Exactly. I think it'd be illegal in any state because he's underage, but I know in some states it's illegal. Right. So, exactly, you, the camera, some camera is going to catch the car leaving that house on the night time. That's, and she slipped up in that second interview she did with the newsreel, which everyone was saying was the first interview. It wasn't. That interview was their first one. Right? So in the second interview, she slipped up there by saying something like, when I went in and woke him up. What? You woke him up? But he was gone. Hmm? Make it make sense, girl. You didn't say that in the first interview with Duchess, but you said it in the second interview. Was that a slip up? Or was it a mis or was it by mistake? You didn't mean you didn't mean it to come out like that. But I sometimes say, sometimes you when people make a slip up, like I said, I didn't mean it like that. I meant no. No. When you say something and then turn around and say, I didn't mean it like that. I meant it like, you know, no, you meant it that way. You meant what you said. So I think that wasn't a slip up when she said about when she went in to wake him up, uh, when she went in and woke him up. That was not a slip up. Now, it wasn't going to write a slip up where she didn't mean it like that. That was a slip up as you just dropped in a big blue path. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I don't think it, she, if 
anything happens, it happens on the night. Right? And she said in this first interview that she was asleep. She went to sleep at 10. This is why I put on that picture, my profile picture. I know us women work, can multitask, but come on. I cannot sleep, read a book, and talk to someone on the phone at the same time. Can't do it. I have been known when I was younger, before I even got married, where I was sitting there reading a book on the sofa, and I fell asleep while, while reading the book, right? And my, my hands were still holding the book. And no one touched me, no one woke me up. Then I woke up and started reading the book. And I only realised I'd woke up because I turned the page over. They said, oh, you're awake now. I said, I've been awake all the time. I've been reading my book. They said, no, you was asleep. So that could happen. But I don't think I'd be talking to someone as well on the phone at the same time. And I think that is why... On the Wednesday, they took the phones on the Monday, yep, got all the electricals on the Monday. They probably started getting, downloading all the information off the phones and everything Monday, Tuesday. They had her statement on the Monday. She probably put in the statement that Sebastian went to bed at 9 o'clock. She fell asleep at 10 o'clock. She woke up and went to bed at 12 o'clock, right? But then when they've downloaded the phones and checked the phones, it's got on her phone and on Chris's phone a two-hour, 15-minute call. So how can you be asleep at 10 but be on the phone at quarter to 10? So that's when Chris then brings it into the conversation. Um, just to make it crystal clear, uh, she phoned me at quarter to ten, at 9.45, 9.45, and we was talking on the phone, and she kept falling asleep then. She's feeling very sleepy. And I told her, about, well, why would you wait two hours to tell someone who was falling asleep on the phone call to go to bed? Why? That doesn't make sense. You know what, SRB, I said that because I didn't take much notice of this interview at first. I really didn't. Then I watched this second interview when they did the, with the news, cat, news people. And I said then, I said, you watch the next interview, they'll add more to it. She'll mention his name. He, Chris, will stop calling her mum. I start calling her Katie, which he did. And I'll add to the story, which they did. Because that's when she brought in the fact that at 10 o'clock she heard a noise. She brought that in on Smiley's interview. She didn't bring it in with the newsreel. She brought it in on Smiley's. Because everyone was thinking, hold on. You've got an autistic child who's on medication, right? And you've heard the noise in the bedroom. And all you do is sit there and say, whatever you're doing in there, you better pack it up, pack it in and get to sleep. You didn't go and check on him, right? Everyone was saying this. And then she does, they do that interview with Chronicles of Olivia. Oh, wow, yeah. Then it comes in, she heard your thud. And she shouts through, Bubba, was that you falling out of bed? And, he's, and he, she says, he comes back and goes, yes, Mum. Right? Oh, no, Mum. No, Mum. And then uh, she goes, well, whatever it is you're doing, you best get to sleep. She still didn't go and check on him. And that was the sticking point for everyone from the first time she said she heard a noise at 10 o'clock, that she didn't go and check on him, and she's still digging. Right? Because they like him to have his privacy. 
Okay, so why do you go and wake him up then in the morning? Why don't you just knock on his bedroom door and go, come on now, Sebastian, time to get up. You go in his bedroom then, don't you, to wake him up. But you can't go in his bedroom to check on him. So it just there's lots of little things that don't make sense. And I hope to God law enforcement are checking up, are watching and going through all these videos like we do. Constantly going through them time and time and time again. As I said, I will now be going. There's several things that programs I need to watch. Right? From the other live the other night, there's something I need to watch from now. Um, but I will be going through all these interviews again on point f 1.5 speed. But then again, I might miss something if I go through it too quick. But I know it was in the interview she did with Smiley that she mentioned she heard a noise at 10 o'clock. And she shouts through to him. Then it was the interview with Chronicles Olivia when she brought in the thud. So, some the county, law enforcement, TBI, anyone, if you're doing your job, note that. Right? Apparently at 10 o'clock as well, she, was, she just wasn't just sleeping. She was reading a book, talking to Chris. Oh, and she heard a thud. But she was sleeping. Please, if anyone of you lot out there in law enforcement, TBI, can make sense of this crap that is coming out of her mouth, then please do. Because he's trying to make out that she was just kept falling asleep. She wasn't asleep. She kept falling asleep. Then he'd wake her up. And then she goes off again. Then wake up again. No. And as... Anyone noticed he's never mentioned, Chris has never mentioned the thud. He said on that one channel that they watched TV together on the phone. What? What? You're joking me. Unless he's got it on his TV, but he's in the car. Unless he's got it on his TV in the five-wheeler, and he's on the phone and they're watching the same program at the same time. I can't wait to see P's explanation of his discrepancy on the camera at the front door. What discrepancy is that? What camera at the front door? Didn't think they had a camera at the front door? I thought it was at the back they had a, a camera. You know what, I haven't I haven't even got round to watching the last live they did. Because I can't stomach it. But I'm going to have to. Oh god, I'm going to have to because I haven't even listened to that live. And I wouldn't even, I won't even play it on it unless there's something on there which I find odd. Then I'll play it on here. But otherwise I won't play it on here. I've only played bulk of that, really. And it's like it says, that case in New Mexico has nothing to do with this. Mm, we can agree to disagree on that, CP, because that case shows us exactly the sort of person we were dealing with. By Nina coming out and speaking, which I 100% agree with her, I am 100% backing her. And I will back her against you anytime, CP. And I will make sure you never get to see your daughter again. Because you don't deserve to see your daughter. Right? And I will back her. She's the one who highlighted 
the sort of person CP is. But then it comes out about the bout incident in the Smiley interview. Hmm? And how he kept saying, yeah, we've done a polygraph. Yeah, I've done a polygraph. We both passed. Don't believe you, CP. I even now, I don't believe you. Unless law enforcement to put out a statement or stand in front of a camera and say, right, okay, we'd just like to make this crystal clear to everyone out there that CP and KP have both took a polygraph and they have both passed. If they do that, then I, I believe it. But until that day, which I think how will freeze over before that day happens, I don't believe you. So where did they have cameras? At the front door? Because they said they had no cameras they, on their house at all. So where was this said in that last interview? Because if so, I'm go it means I've just got to go and watch that last interview, doesn't it? Mm. I know he's, apparently it's been another interview by him. I'm not sure. I'm just seeing it highlighted come up on my YouTube channel, on my TV. Something about Chris's reaction to Seth's, something like that. So I don't know. He said you would see someone on it. Then he said you wouldn't see anything. Hmm. I'm going to have to watch these interviews, aren't I? Oh, God, I really hate to do that, but I'm going to have to, aren't I? I'd say I'd watch it when I was in bed, but it'd give me nightmares. <laughs> um, I tend to watch this, um, what's her name now? I can't think of her name. Uh, but she... She's very good, and she talks about certain cases, and she goes right back to the beginning, and she'll tell you about the person involved, the, the family, everything. And she works on the, up to the gate of when it happens and then afterwards. But her voice is so soothing. So when I go to bed, I put YouTube on, and I put one of her channel, one of hers on. Two different interviews, Justin Courtney. Justin. He's, he has said you would see some, someone in line. Two different interviews. I wonder if I could just watch Justin then and catch, see what he says. But I don't know what one it was. I'll just go through the interviews. I know... It's got to be on Smiley's. They've done a couple of since Chronicles of Olivia. Like web sleuths. But he didn't say anything on there that I caught. That was just a piece of crap that was. Um, but I didn't hear nothing on that one, apart from his foul mouth going. Crystal clear. I'll, honest to God. Every time I hear that him say, I just want to make this crystal clear. Well, make it crystal clear and tell us where Sebastian is then. I don't know if any of you like heard my little mutterings during that live. But I was going, to rag. What else did I go? Awesome. <laughs> Things like that. You know what I mean? And I was saying it very quietly, but I don't know if you picked up on any of it. <laughs> because I'm thinking, you are such a waste of space. As someone, people of some, some people say, that is one your mother should have swallowed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I'm going to, you know what I mean? I'm going to go through it and I'll clip it. Oh man, it was two different it was two different interviews and Justin has been going over them. I can't remember which two they are. 
Vagy... Oh, just sofa and go for them. It's got to be some either the one on Smiley, because I know Smiley's came after the news reel, and then we got the Chronicles of Olivia, and then he did the Nancy Grace. Then he did the web sleuths where he worked in like a bullying a china shop. Then after that one, he went very quiet for a while. Justin is on part seven of eight right now. Oh, so much. Seven of eight. Justin, I haven't watched any of these for a while. I'm going to have to binge watch. I don't mind watching Justin. I might do it for him then. Justin, I'm binge watching you. But I do, I watched this one woman and she, her voice is so soothing. And it can be the worst murder going, you know what I mean? But she's just so soothing. And you sit there and you're listening to it and you're drifting off to sleep. It's her voice. And so, you know what, I'm going to write this down, Justin. Why did you have to do like that, Justin? Why couldn't you just say, do some clickbait headline? Because clickbait headline, a few, I'd probably watch. Justin. So it's eight parts, yeah? And he's on seven of eight. So I've got to watch first part, first one. Okay. My day is it tomorrow, it's Tuesday. I've got a live tomorrow night, but I'll do some binge watching tomorrow. Uh, yes, I think there was ones with Smiley and maybe Duchess, but I can't hold me onto that one. Did it... I think they did do another one with Duchess, didn't they? Because there's on about how they put on about the billboards hang out oh yes they did they did another one with duchess because she said that night everything that she every everyone who did sent her any money it was going towards the billboards so it was with duchess there was another one with duchess so i'm going to have to find that one out as well duchess Smiley. Chronicles. Oh, check Chronicles of Olivia, eh? Yeah, they did do another one. He is, is... I know she was upset, but... Now we know why she's upset. Oh, God. Do I need that many? Oh, my God. I think I might sure I've got enough coffee. <laughs> Not enough smoke, just enough coffee. <laughs> but I'll, I'll watch them tomorrow. I'll go through them tomorrow. And I put my headphones on so my poor, so my poor kittens, my poor, my fur babies don't have to listen to it either. <laughs> I swear to God, I was watching one with him and I had to turn my TV off. I had to turn it off. I got the controls. Clicked my TV, threw my controls on the sofa and walked out the room. I was that like, flipping a mad. Because it's like, you know, every, I can guarantee you when he says, let me make it crystal clear, right? When he says something like that, 
You know everything coming out of his mouth after that is BS. Thank you. Have you got my email? I can put it up here. Where is he? Yeah. I'll put it there. Right. But you, I can guarantee you every time he said, let's make this crystal clear, everything I have after that is BS. And because of that one slip of now, <laughs> it's more coffee than smokes, to be honest with you. I need more coffee. <laughs> I've got a big mug. Right? I've got this, uh, like, flask thing, which I brought for when I go out anywhere. Because when I go out, I'm not one for drinking juice or water. I like my coffee. So even on a hot day, even on a hot day, I have to have my coffee. And the other week we went up the park, me and my grandson, took his beaker full of juice, took my beaker, my flask sort of thing, full of coffee. Right. And um, so I'll just make that up. I'll make it up in my big flask so I can sit there. Some loads of snacks by the side. I swear to God, I'm going to put so much weight on because of this guy just makes me want to... Depresses me. It does. Right? It just depresses me. It makes me feel so depressed because I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's had five wives and four wives have had to go put up with that BS off him. And the fifth wife is too scared to do anything because she, he knows what he's capable of. Your cat's with his groom to get out. The... <laughs> Your cat will be screaming to get out like Trisha was on web sleuths. <laughs> my cat will probably go and lie on my bed somewhere, shut the door in the bedroom. They're probably leaning up against the bedroom door and shut it. He is 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 condescending, and that interview was enough. Now, if I just sat and listened to that interview properly, I could probably click on straight away. But I didn't sit and listen to it properly. Oh yeah, you need the email. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. There it is again. So, oh, you got it. Okay. But no, um, take off then. It's just, how can she live with someone like that, please? I know there's lots of them about. I know there's lots of them about, but how can they? Do they think they're going to change them? Oh, I know for some reasons a lot of these guys put these women down so much that they don't think they are worth anything, right? Like they say, no other man will ever want you. Your used goods and things like that. So they can be make a woman feel so demoralised. And I think that's what he was doing. That's how he treated her. And she was just so desperate to have another man in her life. But love. Desperation over your child. That's not on. You put your children first. You really do. Always put your children first when they're little. Even now I put mine. You know what I mean? I've always said to everyone, my children come first. If, that, if I'm out somewhere, if I was out, say, with someone, say I met a guy and I was out having a drink with him years ago, a few years ago now, and I got a phone call off my son, it'd be, right, I'm going, bye, I'll, I'll be gone. This family, see ya, I'll phone you later, I've got to go. And I'll be gone. So... It's 
Well, her cat was going crazy once it started yapping. <laughs> Whose cat, sir? Oh, yeah. Her's cat won your date, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember that now. She had to go up and let the cat out, didn't she? <laughs> no, my cat would just probably go to my bedroom. I can't, like, because I live on my own, right, I go in my bathroom and I push my door too. I don't shut it shutty, even though the jungle was cats anyway, right? So, and my cat, my one cat, will come through and knock the door open. And sometimes, even before I've got in the bath, I've gone in the bathroom, just pushed the door to, not seeing the snack cat coming behind me, because he's been right behind me. And as I've turned round, it's stand, sitting there on the side of my flipping bath. Feck's sake. Makes me jump every time. I'm going, you're worse than a child. I can't go to the bathroom no more on my own. I can honestly say I've never known someone that has been married five times. He's a weird... Yeah. He's a diamond, isn't he? He's a diamond. Oh, he's a catch of the year. Five... Four times married. Oh, yeah, you're the catch, aren't you? You're the news bees. Yeah. If I've, if I've seen someone and I find out they've been married four times before, i will be going, okay. I'd come home, right, I'd take his number off my phone, everything. I'd block his number, everything. No way, I'm sorry, but you cannot, the guy, a guy cannot put the blame all on the woman, right? He's probably gone, well, it's all, they, you know what I mean? He's probably been putting the blame on the women. Because he's such a perfect catch. But she's no better because she was having an affair with him and he was having an affair with her before they both got divorces. <laughs> but, um, no, it's just... I hope, I think, I really do believe that's why the police started looking into the investigation side because of that information that had been coming out. The fact that she said she was asleep at 10, and I think that's what she put in her first statement with law enforcement. And then they found out she was on the phone at 10. Don't look good when you say things. Get your facts straight, love, before you start making statements. Did you not realise that the police would actually do the job? Or did you think, because Chris is a, so pally-pally with law enforcement, that, oh, yeah, that's on the phone for three hours, but, oh, we'll just ignore that. She told us she was sleeping. She was sleeping. Oh, God. Congratulations, SRB. 30 years. Wow. If my husband had still been alive and I'd still been with my husband because we'd separated, we'd have been married. Hold on. Got married in 89. Yeah, 89. 89, 99, We'd have been married 24 years if we'd, a, if we'd still been together and B, if we'd still been alive. We'd have been married 24 years. But I'd known him. God, uh, I'd known my husband. It was about four years before we got married. So, 
Yeah. So, well, the cookie crumbles in some cases. But, congratulations, SRB, anyway, on that. 30 years. My mum and dad have been married 50 years. Was it 50 years? Uh, hold on, I'll tell you how long it was I've married. I think it's 50 years. Yeah, my mum and dad have been married 50 years, but then on the 22nd of December, not this year, many years ago, no, and then two days later he passed, he died. But I remember that because, because I'd been up and down the hospital a lot while my dad was in hospital, right? I was literally... Getting up in the morning, seeing to my kids, sending them off to school, getting myself ready, going out the door by half nine to get to the hospital. Well, no, I was going out the door by nine to get to the hospital for half nine. And then I'd be there till about three o'clock, come home, cook dinner, feed the kids, see to my husband, and go back up to the hospital and come home about... And then my husband would come up with me then on the night time. And then we'd come home about 11 o'clock at night. And then I'll do it all again the next day. So I wasn't getting a chance to go to the shops. And I mean, oh, God, what can I buy my mum and dad for their anniversary? It's their 50, if you know what I mean. Well, many years before that, right, because my dad passed away in 2007. So 2007, they'd been married 50 years. And... Um, but years before that, when my nan and granddad were alive, my mum and dad brought them for their golden wedding anniversary for 50 years, a lovely china cup and saucer, right? Well, when my nan passed, this china cup and saucer came to me. And I cherished this china cup and saucer. I kept it really safe. And I went to my husband and I said, can you go and get me a gift box? Right, with a load of like the tissue paper. He said, Yeah, well, I said, just get me a box about this deep, this wide. And he went, Okay, so he did. He goes and gets me this lovely box with Philly. And I said, Right, go upstairs in the box in this cupboard and you'll find a cup and saucer. Can you get me? So he does. He gets me that. He goes, What's this for? I said, This cup came from my mum my and granddad. My mum and dad brought this for my nan and granddad on their 50th. I haven't had a chance to get to any shops, to do any shopping, to buy my mum and dad a 50th. He said, oh, that's lovely. He said, so really, it's coming back full circle. I went, yes. So I put this cup in there, got all this bubble wrap and everything, put all the tissue in there, put it in the box. And on the day, we went up to the hospital. I gave her this box. And she opened it, and as soon as she seen it, her face just lit up because she knew where that cup and saucer had come from. Right? And my sister was going, my eldest sister said, oh, where'd you get that from? And my mum turned around and said, this cup has gone full circle. And my sister said, I said, well, me and your dad brought this cup for your nan and granddad on their 50th. And, and I said, and when they passed that, this cup came to me. For some reason, I don't know why it came to me, it just did. I said, and then because it was my mum and dad's 50th, and I've been stuck at the hospital every day, I hadn't had a chance to go out and buy anything. And I thought, oh, the cup and saucer. So I gave it back to my mum and dad. And then when my mum died, that was just one one of the things I wanted from the house. Could I find it? No. Couldn't find it anywhere. So when I come home, and then... About a week or so later, my sister said, she took this photo and said, is this that cup and saucer you're looking for, Ange? I went, yeah. She said, right, she said, I'll box it up to you and get it sent up to you. So she did. 
So now I've got it again. I've got it again. So where's one pass was the bad one? Sorry to hear that, cuz and cuz. Yep, it's right back where it, where it started from. Well, yeah, it is. It's done full circle again because it went from my mum to my grand, from my grand to me, from me to my mum, and then from my mum back to me. I know in my household, I have an argument with my two kids. There's an argument, ongoing dispute. I've got this musical Santa. You wind it up, right? And I've had it. How old is my daughter now? I've had it 32 years, right? And my daughter said, I should have that then, Mum, when you're not around no more. Why? Well, you brought it the Christmas you had me, because I had it in the April. And then I had Christmas. I went, yeah, I brought it that Christmas. Well... That should come to me. And then I've got my son saying, well, I'm the eldest child. It should come to me. So I'm going, oh, my God. So I have this little disagreement every year. And I'm, so I've, I'm come up with an idea. I said I'm having it in my coffin with me. They said, they can't burn it, Mum. I said, I'll make sure they burn the fucking... <laughs> no, I mean, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make put it in out that one year, whatever year, when I'm not around no more, right, if I'm supposed to, say, spend one Christmas with my daughter, which I do, then that is the year she has the Santa. Then the next year, it gets passes back to my son, because that would be the year I'd have spent with them, and vice versa. So it goes back and forth over the years. That way, they'll always, they'll always have something of me there. So that would stop the arguing. <laughs> and I'll get it on a written piece of paper, signed and everything. That, that, that's how it's got to be done. Right, because my son said, well, when you pass, Mum, I'm going to be the first one in your house. I'll, I'll find that, Mr. That Father Christmas. So I don't know where I can hide it in my place because I'll lit it'll literally go through every cupboard and every drawer and everything in my house. I don't know where I could, I could put it in the freezer. You know, we get to my freezer, take the food, take my freezer. <laughs> so, but no, that cup and sauce is now back in my hands. I don't know who will get that when, I, when my time comes. Anyway, we're getting a bit morbid here. So, I don't know what you all think. This, I don't know if that was a slip up on her behalf whether she meant to say that or what. But I think the very first interview is always very telling because that is when they don't have time to make the story. Now, bear in mind that this interview was released on the 3rd of March. But it wasn't, I don't think it was done on the 3rd. I think it was done a couple of days before because... Chris never said anything about, well, as of today, they're now scaling back. He didn't say nothing like that. He just said, as of today, they are, we have had this, this, and this happen, these people here. So that interview was done before the 3rd of March. So they hadn't really had long enough from when, the time Sebastian went missing to when they'd done that interview to get the story in line, yeah? So if anything's going to come out, that's the interview and that's what happened. Katie come out and said what she said. She confirmed it with Duchess. You know what I mean? She confirmed it. 
but then Chris had to step in because I'd just like to make it crystal clear that we was um, on the phone at quarter to ten, 9.45, we was on the phone. And about 10 o'clock, she kept, uh, she was feeling very sleepy, she was getting sleepy. So finally at 12 o'clock, I told her to go to bed. Why would you wait two hours of having your missus on the phone, knowing she's tired, before telling her to go to bed? And then the fact that she throws in the fact that she was reading some book that she needed for her coursework, her studies, because she said that in the Nancy Grace interview. Right? So, I'm sure if you could all stomach him and you all went back over these interviews, you would find, we would find out a lot more. We really would. And anyone on Twitter, if you watch these videos and you find anything out, please, here's my email again. Just email me any information you have. If you find anything, let me know. Or leave me a comment. Okay? So, I'm going to leave it there because I don't like to flog a dead horse. And But tomorrow night... I'm doing the Whitney Hatfield again. All right? Because there's things in that that are still puzzling me of that case, which I want to talk about. And I found those two little videos I wanted to show you. I couldn't find them in the first, in the other one. But tomorrow night, I'm on about, I'm talking about Whitney Hatfield, 16-year-old girl who left her grandmother's one day between half one and half two. She left her grandmother's. Everything was fine, but she left her grandmother's, left a note for the grandmother saying that she was going with a friend or two of friends to do some babysitting and that the... The father there was a doctor and that she was going to get paid and she would contact them as soon as she could. But then, knowing that, they phoned the police. But then later on, they found another letter in the uncle's room because the uncle lived with the grandmother. Right? And the note said, please, please tell Grand not to phone the police because it won't. And well, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, flog a dead horse. Can't get anything out of a dead horse, can you? It's the same in England. I don't have to use it in the USA, but we say in England, you're flogging a dead horse, means you're not getting anywhere with it. But anyway. So tomorrow night, I'm looking at that case again. The Music Wednesday, I'm looking at Stephen Stearns. Hmm. Yep, looking at that. Had some new video come out. But this video came out, I, really, I saw this video after. Well, actually, I might swap nights. I might do Stephen Stearns tomorrow night and... Do because it'll give me a bit more time to try and get some more information on that other case. So I might swap it. I'll do Stefan Stearns tomorrow night. The vile piece of crap he is. That's another night that I'll need my coffee because he does make me feel sick. Anyway, the other case, um, Whitney Hatfield, yeah. It's a very intriguing case. Like I said, there's questions I, I'd love to get answered. Like, because she was adopted, right? She was a mother, a bio mother lived in Montana. And at the time, her adoptive parents lived in Montana. She got adopted. 
and then her adoptive parents moved to Alabama. So she's always looked on as her adoptive mother, as her mother. But what I want to know is where's the bio father? Where's the bio father? I mean, is, is he alive? Is he around still? Is he in prison? You know, I don't know. So I need to find out. So actually, I'll do Stefan Stearns tomorrow night. So it gives me in between being feeling rather sick tomorrow and watching all these interviews tomorrow. <laughs> I'll get some information on that. But I'll do Stephen Stearns tomorrow. But yes, check out the Whitney videos I've done because it's very intriguing, especially the last one because the last one, we look at the interview she did with Smiley and that one tells you a lot more in that one. All right? So if anyone wants to watch a video, a good video, live of mine, what we, uh, is from the third today, this, no, yeah, third, uh, Whitney Hatfield, 2nd of June, uh, what was it called now, I can't remember, um, I just got Whitney Hatfield continued, okay, so, but that's the most, in, that's the one with the most information on it so far. So if you want to catch up on it, watch that one. That will tell you everything. There was another one I covered the other day in the afternoon. I think it was yesterday afternoon. Yeah. On a James Yablonski, who's 14, when he, I've got video camera, camera of him leaving the house. Getting into his dad's car, he had a couple of bags in his hands, he gets into his dad's car, drives the car away. They found the car, and then within a couple of hundred yards into the woods, the forest, they found an overnight area where someone obviously had been, because they found items of his there. But they don't know where he went from there. And now that's been a year It'll be a year soon. It was a year today, I believe, that Laurie Page went missing. Yeah, I think it was today. A year today, Laurie Page went missing. So we're coming up to a lot of years, a lot of one-year points in the cases. But on the, I am doing a live as well. I'm going to kick myself for doing it, but I'm doing it on summer, summer moon, Utah Wells. I'm going to kick myself, but I'm going to stick to the facts on that case. I'm not getting dragged into all the drama. I don't want to know the drama. And one comes in the chat with drama, they're getting shown the door. If anyone comes in and they start giving me drama, they're out. Because that is one case I don't want to do because of the drama. All right. So I'm going to do what I do, like I do with Sebastian, and just stick to the facts. Which isn't for, isn't much. There isn't much about that fact, boys. A bit like Sebastian. Not much. But I'm doing it because it's a three-year one. Oh, boy, no bathroom shots. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Cars, oh boy, no, no bathroom shots. Yeah, but that will be on the 13th of June. I was going to do it on the 15th, but then I realised I'm not here. I go away on the 14th for the weekend. So... I'm doing it on the 13th. It's just to, just to say, look, we haven't forgotten you, Summer, you know what I mean? Even though nothing new has come out on that case. Oh, God. He didn't. 
See, I wasn't really following that case, right? Uh, well, I was, but I wasn't taking... I wasn't sitting there with my notebook and taking notes, right? Because it's just too much drama. You know what I mean? You had, and even now, you still got YouTubers biting, literally claws are out and they're going for each other. <laughs> Crazy people got a poop too. Yes, but they had no, he had no door or anything on their bathroom, did they? It was only after they had the children took off them that they had help. People go up there and help them finish off and they got a, a, a wall built and a door put up and everything on the toilet, on the bathroom. They had proper stairs built in to go downstairs. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was... I, it was, even now, you're still getting them now, you know what I mean? And I feel sorry for someone because it is right, people are just, as I said, you're just flogging a dead horse because you're not going to get nothing out of it, you, you know what I mean? But there's still channels who go daily on summer wells, daily. And I'm thinking, why? Yes, keep her name out there, keep her name alive. But do we have to go daily? So, yeah, that's why I've gone down to two days with Sebastian, Monday and a Friday. And I won't be on this Friday unless my grandson allows me because I've got my grandson here. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. He might he might be okay and say, yeah, go on live, Grant, go on your live. Right. But if he's in one of those moods where then I won't be because it's not I like spending time with my grandson, you know what I mean? I really do. I love him to bits. So we'll see how he is. And I just hope to God get falls asleep in his own bed and stays in his own bed all night. My dad had lived, had lived in Hawkins County and that case was special to me. Really? Wow. It's a shame though because law enforcement dropped the ball on that big time. They had enough, ev they've got enough evidence to have charged them with child neglect. But they never did. Never did. <coughs> so, <coughs> it's a shame. And as I said, the only way they're going to find her, and that's if she's not buried up on the hill. Because even law, they've said, even law enforcement believe they've moved her body several times. They are, I love them. I've got to wait, and as I said, I won't be here that on the 15th because. <coughs> My grandson's birthday on the 10th, but his mum didn't want to have the party the weekend, the weekend before his birthday because he might get confused, right? So she's having it after his birthday, so she's having it the weekend after. So I said, I'll go down that weekend, right? So I'm going down that weekend, and I go down, normally go down on the Friday, because I have to take my fur babies over to my son so they can look after my fur babies. And so I go down on the Friday. And by and you know the worst part of it, I go down by coach, right? Because I don't drive. I haven't got the patience to drive. Right? I'd be locked up for road rage. So I go down by coach. And the coach journey is fine. No problem. But then I get off the coach and I have to go and get a bus to their house. 
And this bus journey is like one hour long. And now they've got a thing in the UK and in Scotland, right, more in Scotland where you have to ring the bell. If you don't ring that bell, they won't stop. You could be standing out the front of that bus stop, but if you, uh, bus platform. But if you don't ring that bell, the bus will not stop. So you're sitting there, and you won't just get one person ring the bell if they want to get off. Say there's five people wanting to get off that bus. You get the bell going, ding, 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 ding. I'm going, stop ringing the fucking bell. Honest to God, I nearly lost it one time. So after that now, I just put my headphones on. And I'll listen to some on YouTube. You know what I mean? Because it blocks out that ding, 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 ding of the flipping bounce. So then I get off the bus and then I've got like a 10, 10 minute or so walk from the bus stop. And it's a bit of a jaunt because I have a big case with me and I'm going to have a big case and a little whole door bag because I've got presents to go in the case. So the presents go in the case with some of my other items like my, my, I don't know, my snoodie or something, because I, I live in my snoodie. I live in it, right? And I tend to put it on when I first get up in the morning. Even though it could be a nice, gorgeous day, I put my snoodie on. So I put the, that in the case with anything else. And then my other holder, I've got all my everyday wear, everything I'm going to be wearing those few days, and my shoes, my makeup, my wash stuff. So I normally have a big case and a whole door. And it's not so bad if it's nice weather. But if, like, in the winter, when I've gone down in the winter and there's been snow on the ground and you've got to pull a case along in the snow, or it's peeing down with rain, and you can't put an umbrella up because you've got a case and a whole door. Plus, the wind is that strong that if you did put your umbrella up, it's likely to go blow it out your flipping hand. So you get soaking wet. So it's a bit of a jaunt. I don't like it in the winter. I really don't. But in the summer, like now, if it's nice, it's lovely. It's a nice little walk. Even though it's uphill, then downhill. But, you know, I'm going, so that's why I'm going down that weekend for his, for his birthday. They're having a little get-together. Don't know where. Don't know if they're having it at home or if they're booking somewhere. Don't know. But that's what they're doing. And that's why I go. I always go down on his birthday. Always. Every year. There's only one year I was not able to go down. And that was in 2022. Yeah, 2022. Because I was in hospital. Well, I wasn't in hospital. I'd had an operation about a week before his birthday. Or was it after his birthday? It was in, after his birthday. I was I had an operation after, literally the day after his birthday. So I couldn't go down that year for his birthday, which upset me. It did upset me not being able to go down for his birthday. So, that's it, but yeah, and then my other grandson who lives in Dundee, so I get to go to his birthday every year, and my granddaughter's every year, so it just upset me that I couldn't go to my grandson's birthday, I was so upset, so, so upset, but it couldn't be helped, it had to happen. Anyway, everyone, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you all for commenting, giving me your opinions. Those on X, please leave me a comment or show me some love. Show me the heart. Right? And everyone on YouTube, those in the, on the bushes, I know there's some in the bushes. So please, catch up by watching the last one of my Whitney Hatfield. The one I've done yesterday. That's the one you need to do. You're welcome, NCOS. And if you've got any information, 
let me know. You got my emails. And I'll see you all soon. Till then. Hold on, I've just got to get my endings. Just got to get my endings up. Till then. Good night.